Welcome to Holy Name Cathedral, the home of the Roman Catholic Church in Chicagoland. As the Cathedral of the Archdiocese, Holy Name serves as the home parish for our Cardinal, as well as a vibrant parish family of over 5,000 households. In this short presentation, we will take a walk through this grand structure, which has impressed residents of our city and visitors since its opening in 1875. Over the years, while the building has had its share of trials, including a collapse of portions of the ceiling and a nearly disastrous fire, as well as numerous renovations, Holy Name has remained a community of believers who share the notion that the mission of the church is not to the church, but rather to the world. Holy Name is indeed a universally known landmark and testimony to the enduring Catholic faith that has been a part of Chicago since its very beginnings. The original Church of St. Mary's, Chicago's first, built first near State and Lake Streets, then relocated to Madison and Wabash, and today located down on 1500 South Michigan Avenue, was the first cathedral in the city, consecrated by Bishop Quarter in October of 1845. It remained Chicago's official cathedral until the Great Fire of 1871. In 1846, and built inside the old University of St. Mary on the Lake, the original chapel of the Holy Name of Jesus was the first predecessor of our current parish. A freestanding structure was erected in 1849. The Irish residents of the area were our parishioners at that time, as the priests who staffed the university and chapel were Irish immigrants and spoke English. Chicago was home to just 23,000 people at that time. Since the masses and confessions were heard in German at the nearby St. Joseph Parish at Chicago and Cass, today that's Wabash, the Irish residents built their own church nearby on state between what is today Superior and Huron Streets. In 1851, this second parish, the Church of the Holy Name, functioned as the Cathedral of Chicago due to its immense size until it was destroyed in the Great Fire of 1871. During the blaze, the pastor at that time, Father McMullen, rushed to the church to save the Blessed Sacrament from the approaching flames. All else was lost in that tragic disaster, which nearly destroyed our great city. In 1874, then Bishop Foley announced the laying of the cornerstone for today's structure, and in true Chicago spirit, the largest parade to date was held to commemorate the laying of the eight-ton piece of Illinois limestone. Under the direction of architect Patrick Keeley, the new cathedral took 16 months to complete. It was dedicated on November 21, 1875, and accommodated 2,300 worshipers, far more than today's cathedral. In 1880, Chicago was designated an archdiocese and today includes approximately 400 parishes in Cook and Lake Counties in Illinois. Over the decades, Holy Name Cathedral has undergone many renovations, improvements, and other changes to keep the structure safe and sound, even to the re-anchoring of every wooden tile in the ceiling and repairs from a massive fire that almost destroyed the entire building in February of 2009. But enough history, much as that's a passion for our current pastor, Monsignor Dan Mayall. In fact, if you see him at church sometime, ask him anything you like about Holy Name. The man is an encyclopedia of knowledge about the place, past and present. Every day, Holy Name serves its most important function for Catholics, the celebration of the Holy Eucharist and Mass. It also hosts several hundred weddings and even more baptisms every year as well as all the other sacraments and the liturgical ceremonies that are emblematic of our Catholic faith tradition. Join us now as we tour our little church, the place where Chicago goes to pray. The vestibule screen greets visitors and represents the Tree of Life. This bronze and glass screen was designed by Albert J. Frischia and separates the vestibule from the nave of the church. The loft features a Flentrop orgel bow organ from Holland with four keyboards. It was made possible by a $600,000 gift from our parishioner, Alice O'Malley Robinson, in honor of her husband, William Dunwoody Robinson, in 1988. It was accepted by our beloved Bishop Timothy Lyne, then the pastor of the parish. Handcrafted by artisans in Flentrop, this organ is a mechanical marvel and artistic gem. 
All the decorations, pipe shades, and gilded facades are hand carved, while the organ case is made of solid French oak. There are 71 stops, 117 ranks, 5,558 pipes distributed over four manual keyboards and foot pedal. The organ fills the church with beautiful and reverent sounds every day and assists our choir and parishioners in praising the Lord. After all, he who sings prays twice, as the saying goes. Our ceiling is adorned with 23,000 pieces of wood, each nailed and secured in place with special screws installed after portions of the ceiling collapsed in February of 2008. The parishioners came together and all joined hands to raise the roof, amassing several million dollars to complete the renovations and make the structure safe. It seems the original architect, Mr. Keeley, while a great builder of Gothic-style churches, had a design flaw in his plan that ultimately necessitated the rebuilding of all 24 columns supporting the roof on the outside of the building. A genius of an engineer, Rich Christie, from the Northbrook, Illinois firm of Wiss, Janney, Elsner Associates, came up with the design, which not only kept Holy Name standing, but also preserved our inspiring cathedral ceiling intact. The most impressive feature in the cathedral to most visitors is the unique resurrection crucifix created by artist Ivo de Metz, a powerful sign of the universal church. Christ is depicted not in agony, but as the triumphant Lord of our salvation. Back in 1915, a major expansion of the cathedral structure occurred to link it to the rectory. While in 1968 and 1969, the most extensive changes were made, reflecting the tenets of Vatican II and other quite practical concerns. The new altar, made of a single six-ton slab of Argentine granite, is supported on the base, which features cast bronze bas-relief scenes of Old Testament sacrifice, precursors of Christ's sacrifice. They include Abel's offering, the high priest Melchizedek's offering of bread and wine, Abraham's willing obedience in offering to sacrifice his son Isaac, and the prophet Elijah receiving bread and water from the angel of the Lord for strength to continue his journey. The consecrated altar contains the relics of St. John the Apostle and St. Timothy, companion of St. Paul. During the renovation of 1968 and 69, the floor was torn up and the basement of the cathedral was built. Sometimes you can hear, or at least feel, the State Street subway passing. So you can imagine that daunting engineering task, which was successfully completed by architects from Harry Weiss and Associates, who also designed today's Bernadine Paris Center across the courtyard from the church. The stations of the cross run along both sides of the church and across the back wall. Made from cast bronze and framed in red Rocco Alicante marble, they are the work of Goffredo Virginelli. They depict the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. The ambo of the evangelist, to the left of the main altar as you face it, is where the mass readings are proclaimed. This bronze casting was made by Eugenio de Corton and represents the authors of the four Gospels. Matthew, the angel representing the Gospel of the Church, Mark, the lion and inspiration for Peter's teachings and catechesis, Luke, the ox for his recounting of Christ's infancy, and John, the eagle for the writer of the spiritual Gospel recounting the Word made flesh. In the sanctuary rests the shrine of the Blessed Sacrament, holding the tabernacle with its light of Christ. This bronze screen envisions the ascension of the risen Christ. The cathedra, or chair in Latin, is the official seat of the Bishop of Chicago. This simple chair has three panels showing the first Christian teachers, Christ in the center, Peter on the left, and Paul on the right. Our current shepherd and teacher, Francis Cardinal George, is one of only four men who've occupied this seat, the others being Cardinals Cody and Bernadine, as well as our beloved Pope John Paul II, who sat there during his landmark visit to Chicago in 1979. The huge bronze sanctuary panels above the cathedra represent the holy name of Jesus, designed by artist Attilo Selva. 
From left to right, they are the presentation of Jesus in the temple, when Simeon knew he could die a happy man, having seen the promised Messiah. The divine origin of the name, showing the mystery of the Holy Trinity, and an angel carrying the monogram of Christ to earth. The risen Christ, proclaimed as Lord. Mary and Joseph, presenting the child Jesus for circumcision and naming. and The holy name and priesthood of Jesus, with Christ adorned in his vestments, presenting the chalice to all reflected at every Mass by the priest who stands in Loco Christi for us. Okay, what are these funny-looking red hats doing here, hanging high above the sanctuary? Well, those are called galeros, and they are the ceremonial hats of the five men who served as cardinal archbishops of the Archdiocese of Chicago. From left to right, Albert Meyer, Joseph Bernadine, George Mundelein, John Cody, and Samuel Stritch. Though the traditional Gallero was discontinued after Vatican II, special hats were fashioned for Cardinals Cody and Bernadine. The sanctuary organ was handmade by Cassavant Frères in 1981 and contains 1,284 pipes with 19 stops and 25 ranks on two keyboards and a foot pedal. It is a modern adaptation of the organ building techniques of the 17th century French style one of the most notable in organ history. The instrument was given to the parish in memory of Florence Bowles. It is often used in unison with the choir or cantor during Mass. The Shrine of the Blessed Mother, located to the right of the main altar, is a Lucchetti bronze image of Mary's assumption to be Queen of Heaven. The cast screen rises above over Rosso Alicante marble. More traditional devotional stations to Mary are located in the basement of the cathedral and outside in the courtyard, which separates the church from the school and the parish center. The ambry holds the three sacred oils consecrated each year at the Chrism Mass and used in the Catholic sacraments. The oil of the catechumens is used at baptisms, both infant and adult. Sacred chrism, used for confirmation and holy orders, as well as at baptisms and the oil of the sick used to anoint those who are in ill health, preparing for surgery, or afflicted with any other malady of mind, body, or spirit. At the ambo of the epistle writers, also located to the right of the altar, our lectors and cantors proclaim their good news during mass and special liturgies. The ambo is also the work of Eugenio de Corton, who fashioned the opposing ambo of the evangelists. Its bronze casting depicts the authors of the early church communities. Peter, with his keys to the kingdom of God, Paul, who died by the sword as a Roman citizen, James, who preached on the necessity of faith sustained by good works, and Jude, carrying a whip to signify correction and self-discipline. An often misunderstood feature of Holy Name Cathedral these abstract stained glass windows were created by artisans in Milan, Italy, and offer a unique atmosphere of prayer and reflection while making maximum use of available light on the crowded skyline of downtown Chicago. Every piece of art in the cathedral tells a story of mankind's movement from darkness into light, from sin to salvation, and these windows do it most dramatically as the colors gradually progress from darker hues to the bright white and gold windows seen behind the altar and the resurrection crucifix. The overall architecture of the cathedral is classic Gothic. Each element, from the upward reaching support beams to the intricately patterned floor, tell a part of the story of man's search for his relationship to God. The five circles on the ceiling were originally drawn in 2008 by Chicago artist Larry Cope, a South Side Chicago guy from Corpus Christi Parish. In the center, the large IHS is a 15th century logo representing the holy name of Jesus and popularized by Saint Bernardine of Siena. It is placed over a shadow image of a phoenix bird, the mythical figure rising from its own ashes, Christ rising from the dead. Chicago rising from the Great Fire, and ironically, the cathedral itself surviving with a new life. The surrounding circles are the classic representation of the four evangelists. Matthew, a man, Mark, a lion, Luke, an ox, John, an eagle. They look down on our little church that measures 233 feet long, 
126 feet wide and can seat 1,520 people. The ceiling is over 70 feet high, while the spire of the cathedral reaches to 210 feet. As you may know, in medieval times, the higher the spire, the closer to God was the thinking. At Holy Name Cathedral, we don't need to look up too far to see him, really. The gold leaf on the ceiling was meticulously restored in the wake of the 2009 fire by the Deprato Regali Studios of Chicago, while the elegant terrazzo floor, new front doors, and the special access ramps, as well as the remodeled basement area in the cathedral, were the work of architect Robert Nicola. Other notable features of our little church include the courtyard, where visitors often spend time with Mother Mary. Our chapel, where a beautiful yet very powerful image depicts the ongoing struggle between good and evil in the world. This chapel is used for rosary hour, benediction, some weddings, and private masses. The sacristy, where our sacristans take great care in the handling of priests' vestments and all the adornments for the cathedral, in addition to our liturgy council and others. The reconciliation rooms, where that most necessary sacrament is offered. Our security personnel are on duty every day at their stations to secure the premises and assist the many visitors who come to Holy Name. We are somewhat of a tourist attraction, and that's okay with us, as the place itself is a formidable tool for evangelization. Relics and devotionals to St. Faustina, the Polish nun who gave us the divine mercy, are treasured in another side ambry near the altar. Plans are ongoing for additional relics to be displayed here. Oh, and one more very special place is provided at Holy Name Cathedral, just for you. We say we're the place Chicago goes to pray, and we're waiting for you, and so is he. Awesome.